Hello everyone, I'm the Mass Analyst. This is a video response to New Akatsuki. Please forgive me if I killed the pronunciation of your alias. Uh, please forgive me. Also, you go by the name of uh, FMM on the Islam and Friends show. Now, Rex from Islam and Friends had made a video about a father who found uh, a naked guy in the bedroom of his daughter, and he took a, a, I'm guessing it was a lead pipe or an iron pipe, some sort of pipe, and bashed the guy's head in. Rex took the position that U.S. law should not prosecute this guy, that he shouldn't have been charged with anything. At least that's, if I'm understanding his position correctly, um, nothing should have happened to him. In fact, he went further and stated that he should have, if he were to be criticized, the father should be criticized for being too lenient on the guy, that the father should really have killed the guy instead. I took issue with this. Now, uh, New Akatsuki, uh, made a video response to me and I'm responding to that. Please forgive me, I'm going I wrote down a few different points that I want to make sure I hit. So I'll be checking back and forth from that. First of all, uh I want to thank you for clarifying that you weren't serious when you said that the father should have pursued the guy and pumped him up uh, uh with a sniper rifle. So I appreciate your clarification there. Now, you also asked uh, what the hell would the uh father be expected to think when he sees a naked guy in the bedroom of his teenage daughter? Of course he's going to be furious, and I agree with that. But what the hell would he think? Well, one thing he might think, one thing that he should think, is that teenagers in America are promiscuous. The possibility, ever so slight, that maybe his daughter was a, a, a bit of a nasty girl, that uh, she invited him up that should have at least crossed his mind, at least long enough for him to ask, what the hell is going on here, before taking the lead pipe to uh, the boyfriend's head. He could have at least looked at his daughter to see if she looked like she was in fear of this guy, whether she was cowering, or whether she was reacting in horror as he was about to hit the guy with a pipe. He could have done a little bit of assessment of the situation first before smacking the guy with a, with a pipe. Now, you offer the false dichotomy of what should the guy have done? Invite, invite uh, the boyfriend up for uh, tea and crumpets and discuss these, uh, this thing rashly? No, of course you should hit, the, uh, him, hit him with a pipe. Well, that's what I call a false dichotomy. He could have taken a third option. Clearly, he had already called the police. That much is known. What he could have done is he could have held the bat at ready or the pipe at ready and say, move and I smash your head and waited for the police to have come. Now, admittedly, it is possible, although unlikely, that the father may have been in genuine fear of what this guy could have done. We don't know the specifics. I mean, if this guy was the size of the undertaker, then even if he was naked, then the father would have had a reasonable fear, and maybe smashing him in the head with a, a pipe would be a logical thing to do, if he genuinely feared the guy. But seems to me that the police did the right thing in arresting him, and that will be brought up in court. Let the court decide whether a reasonable person in his situation uh, was doing this in self-defense. If the court says yes, then even though he's charged with aggravated assault, then he's going to get off. Now, you claim that a man's house was his castle, and that he can do whatever he wants to defend his castle, and that what he says goes in the castle. I disagree to a certain extent. By and large, you're correct, but certainly there are limitations. For example, suppose you live in a fairly crowded neighborhood where there are neighbors close by. Even though it's your castle, that doesn't mean that at 3 o'clock in the morning you have the right to blast your stereo at uh, at full volume. It doesn't give you the right. There are limitations on your right. It doesn't give you the right to uh, raise skunks in your castles if the scent is going to drive your neighbors up the wall. Uh, and in fact, you seem to contradict yourself in a way in that you said that the American law is such that the father can't allow the kid to have uh, sex in, uh, while she's underage in his, uh, in his house that he could be legally held responsible for. Well, if he could legally be held responsible for this, then obviously you recognize that there are limitations of what he can allow in his castle. Now, I'll disagree with you on the fact that he would 
he could or that he would likely be uh, legally held responsible for letting his kid have sex with a boyfriend. Suppose the daughter's 15, the boyfriend's also 15. Would he be legally liable for allowing his kids to have sex in the house? And if so, what about outside the house? Would the state prosecute him for that? Now, if you answer that, the state would likely or could prosecute him for this within his house, but you argue that they are not going to prosecute him outside the house, then in fact you're admitting that he has fewer rights for what's going on inside his castle, that he's got greater responsibility and fewer rights than what happens outside of his house. So there's a bit of a, a, a bit of a contradiction there. Now you changed my example. Maybe you didn't do this consciously. I'm not accusing you of doing this consciously, but I gave an example of a, a boyfriend or a friend coming to the house without the father's knowledge in order to study math with his daughter. Now you said, well, if the father saw the friend at, uh, in the early hours of the morning doing this, then, well, in this situation he might ask a question, but he still had the right to bash the guy's head in if he didn't like the answer, if he felt uncomfortable. Actually, the question that I posed was at 7 o'clock in the evening, I believe. I might not have said the right time, but at least I intended, and if I didn't say it explicitly, what happens if the father comes in, catches the daughter and the guy together, 7 o'clock in the evening, they're both at the kitchen table, math book spread out, calculator in hand. In that case, would the guy have the right to smash the boyfriend in the head with a, uh, with a crowbar? I say absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I think even you would probably say under those circumstances that would, that would not be justified and the state has a right and in fact an obligation to prosecute him under those circumstances. Now something we can agree on, as I mentioned before, if the father was feeling genuinely threatened, if the father felt that his daughter's safety was genuinely threatened, and by genuinely threatened I mean an immediate threat, I don't mean maybe she's threatened with pregnancy, maybe she's threatened with an STD, I'm, I'm not talking about that. If he felt that her life was in immediate danger, then yes, of course, he would have every right to go and attack him with a baseball bat or whatever. Whether that's at 7 o'clock in the evening, or whether that's early in the morning, whatever the time, if there is a legitimate threat, of course, the police would be expected to come in under those circumstances, and if there was some question as to whether or not there was a legitimate threat, then they would be expected to arrest the guy, let the court systems uh, settle it out, let the judge hear all the facts surrounding the situation, and let him make the decision. But they shouldn't just let the guy get off scot-free without even bringing this to the court system's attention. Now I'd like to turn my attention to Sharia law. And here I'm going to admit straight out that I am very weak. I'm going to admit right at, right now that my understanding of Sharia law is not what it should be, and I may screw up and may say something stupid. So my apologies for mangling this in advance if I do say something stupid. I'm sure you'll uh, be quick to correct me, and that's absolutely fine. That's what you should do. Now, you had found it kind of funny that I had uh, said, on the one hand, that Rex's position was influenced by Sharia law, and on the other hand, I said that every male would have the same reaction. Well, actually what I said was every male would have the same emotional reaction. Not every male would react to it in the same way. Uh, not every male would react on his emotions in the same way. And I said that I believe that Rex's willingness to actually act and take a uh, bat to the guy's head was shaped on his belief in in Islam that somehow it had at least some subtle undercurrents in his thinking, even if it's not a conscious level. And I base this, and perhaps wrongly, on the fact that I believe he has stated in the past that he would like to see Sharia law in the United States. Also, it seems to me that he is now advocating that the U.S. law should be that in a situation like this the father should be exonerated, that he shouldn't be prosecuted at all. Now, 
if both those statements are true, then that would justify my belief that Sharia law says, yes, the father should not be prosecuted in this case, that it's so perfectly okay to go bashing the head in in a situation like this. Now, I, after I made the video, I read the comments. Rex has left a few comments on my video, and it appears that he wants to go beyond what Sharia law would allow, that this is not exactly what Sharia law would allow, and in fact, maybe, and I could be misreading this, maybe Sharia law would actually punish the father in a situation like this. I'm, re I'm not really sure. Now, if indeed Rex is saying that he, well, in the one hand, if Sharia law would allow it, then I stand by my statement that Sharia law and U.S. law and, and customs just don't mesh. If it doesn't allow this, then Rex is saying that what he wants uh, to be instituted in the U.S. would not fall under Sharia law, which is, I find kind of unusual. But if what he's saying is that Sharia should not be adopted by the U.S., then we're in total agreement. We just approach it from very, very, very diff different angles. So I'm going to apologize to you. I'm going to apologize to Rex if I'm misstating your beliefs. I have to admit that I am somewhat muddled here, and I'm just doing my best to try and figure out uh, the logic of, of what's going on here, so my apologies in advance. But I appreciate you making that video, and I hope I've answered your questions. If it were me in that situation, if I were in the father's situation, I'd like to think that, having called the police, that I would have uh, held the uh, the pipe in my hand and told the boyfriend, move a muscle and I'm going to smash your head and waited for the police to come and if the guy was over 18 then I would have insisted on statutory rape charges being filed against him well, that's my take on things I'm the mass analyst under and in